So, congratulations on landing the serial killer of your dreams. Julie is a person who truly needs help. Yeah, psychiatric help. You see, there's a difference between that and just being a good buddy. She deserves a fair shake. Do you love her? Head over heels. Really? Then say it. I just did. No, say the words, Ramsey. I love her. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just remember who knows you the best, huh? Ever since our regression therapy, my dreams about the murders have been even more vivid. They've been so disturbing, but you know that better than anyone. Even your fiance? Chris has been my rock. He makes me feel secure. Is he the reason you want to get out so badly? He's a big part of it. Well, you'd certainly seem to be doing better if you married an up-and-coming young doctor. Maybe, but that is not why I said yes to him. My feelings for him are real. And you'd like to see more of him in person. And that wouldn't be a problem if my lawyer was doing everything he could. Well, I'm sure Lee is doing what he feels is best for you. Well, I don't agree with his thinking. I've decided to have him removed as my guardian. Julie, Lee isn't the problem. Your privileges were revoked because when you broke out of here, you knocked a guard unconscious. You broke into the Scanlon house. You had a weapon. These are all things that any judge would take into consideration regardless of your lawyer. Yes, but isn't it progress that I want to make decisions for myself? And I support that. But I also think you should stay here under treatment for however long it takes. You've been good for me so far. I do respect your opinion. Good. Because like Lee, I want the best for you. Yeah. We'll see each other again soon. Oh, I'm so grateful for your concern, Kevin. I'll be sure to find some way to thank you when I'm out. Thanks again for dinner. You're very welcome. I'm outside, hoping to see another shooting star. Well, I'll see if I can send one over. Frank, is that you? Lucy, is Christina asleep? Yeah. Okay. She sure is. She just went out like a light. Okay. Now, what is it you want to tell me that I'm not going to like? Daddy, Daddy, guess what? What? Lucy, me, and Christina went to the park. Really? Well, yeah. I want to hear all about that, except right now, Lucy and I have to have a little grown-up talk. It's okay. I already know about the man who came over. What man? You know, the bad man from the nurse's ball. Um, hey, sweet pea, why don't you run upstairs and just make sure Christina um, is okay, and I'll come up and check on you two in a minute. I want to talk to your dad, okay? Okay. Okay. Stay with me. Thanks. In my house? Where my child plays with her toys? He, he came... Because of the tape. The tape. Okay. Well, let's just see what's on this tape once and for all. Uh, Scott, wait. Uh, no, no, wait. No, no, no. I want to discuss that with you first, please. Scott, what? Why can't I have a VCR that works? I hate the fact that this guy was in the house today. And if he ever touches one hair on your head. That'll never happen. Frank? Is that you? Yeah, sure, it's me. I told you, in my car. You okay? I could have sworn I just saw you. He has asleep. Oh, oh, good. I was worried he'd have a rough night after that first round of chemo. Oh, well, his nausea wasn't too bad, but he was exhausted. Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, um, today was the last day of school, and... 
Neil's teacher cleaned out his desk and sent these papers home. Get well cards. Neil, get well soon. Dear Neil, sorry you're sick. I liked working on the spider project together. You know a lot. My mom told me about how mean cancer is and how people lose their hair. Don't worry. You look good in your Yankees hat. Love, Sally. My Future by Neil Canellos. Dr. Lambert, please. This is Dr. Lambert. Can I tell you how good it is to hear your voice? Well, I like you, too. Are you okay? Well, it's everything I can do to keep from calling Mac every two seconds to see if he has any new information on Victor, but other than that, I'm dandy. Well, I'm sure your meeting with Julie did wonders for your nerves. Well, I wouldn't be breaking confidentiality if I told you she's just thrilled about the engagement. She can't wait to pick out china patterns and tell the entire world about it. You know, I tried to get the skinny from Chris, but he insists that he really, truly cares about Julie. Do you believe that? Heck no. But for the life of me, I can't figure out what his real agenda is. Well, I put in a call to Lee. As soon as he calls me back, I'll set up a meeting and talk to him about it. Hey, uh, did you get a chance to get back on the computer? Not yet, I just walked in. Okay, well, I reinstalled the entire system and ran a program to disinfect the virus. Well, then I'll boot up Victor's role-playing game and see if I can locate him. I wish I could be there to help. I know you would if you could. I just wish Victor would contact me. The fact that he was so emphatic that I not even try to find him just tells me he's in real trouble. Mary? Oh, hey, have you heard from Victor? Not a word. What about you and Kevin? Nothing. Sorry. Look, I, I know this sounds odd, but uh, I I'd really appreciate it if you... if you kept Victor's leaving quiet. Oh, sure. Uh, because, you know, he might change his mind and, and come back to me. Absolutely, Mary. I won't tell us all, I promise. Mary, we both love Victor so much. And I know that Victor is head over heels in love with you. Something's not right. This is off. No, I agree. Kevin and I are going to do everything we can to find Victor and get to the truth behind all this. Any clues so far? No. But we won't give up. Well, what about my apartment, the things you took out? Any leads there? Well, we're working on it. Please enter logon name. Bill Dyson. Password, M-O-N-K. All right. How do you play this game? Greetings. What is your home base? Fort Charles. Explain your purpose. To contact Victor Collins. I ask you a question, you run me through with a sword. No, 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 don't log on. Oh, damn it. Bill Dyson, rest in peace. I don't want to rest in peace, Victor. Hello? Kevin. Lee, Lee, thanks for calling me back. Um, listen, I had a pretty disturbing session with Julie today. She tell you about her petition to remove me as her guardian? Yes, she did. That's what I want to talk to you about. Well, I can't get away from the hospital right now. Well, that's all right. I'll come to you. Okay. 
And you... I will see you later. Victor, he, uh, he left this note for my mother. He said he didn't want to ruin her life. And then he just disappeared. Oh, poor Mary. I thought they were the perfect match. It just shows how wrong you can be. Hey, I'll give her a call. See if she needs anything, okay? She'd like that. You know, she's become a real big fan of yours. I mean, she appreciates everything that you did, Courtney. I mean, the shower, the wedding planning. I hope those don't become bad memories for her. My future. You sure you want to read that? I'm sure. My future by Neil Canellos. I have a lot of dreams for my future. First, I hope my mom and dad fall in love and get married. <laughs> my dream for the perfect day is my dad takes me and my mom to the World Series. Yankees win, of course. Yeah. R2-D2 drops by my house to meet me, and my dad gives my mom dozens of humongous purple roses, because girls like that stuff. I'm going to be a professional baseball player and have four kids. I'm never going to get mad at my kids when they forget their lunch for the zillionth time, because my mom and dad never get mad at me for that kind of stuff. When I grow up, I want to be just like If my kids are scared of the dark, I'll always let them sleep with the light on, even when they're way too old for that. Because my mom says, when kids are scared, things look dark. They need to know they can always find a light somewhere. He still sleeps with the light on. He's never outgrown that. <laughs> well. What if? What ifs? What ifs don't do anybody any good. Neil is everything to me. He... I'm sorry, Joe. I, I didn't mean to exclude you. I, I know that. This is very difficult for you, too. You just found out you have a son, and now... Now you have to face losing him. This is not gonna happen. Sydney. We are gonna be strong. We are gonna be so strong for Neil. And for each other. I don't feel strong, Joe. You have such an incredible strength. I saw you and I watched you when Neil was sick before. Courtney, you nursed him back to health. And I saw you in Greece, fighting for your life. Don't ever, ever sell yourself short. We're not going to lose him. Hello? Frank? Frank, are you in there?
Close call. Who was you? What are you doing here, Frank? Karen, I thought you were... What, in my apartment? That's Ellen over there. After I saw you in the window, I called her to come over so you would think I was home. Why were you watching me, Frank? I wasn't watching you. Why do you have an apartment directly across from mine? I logged on as Bill Dyson, but when I asked about contacting Victor, it ran me through with a medieval sword. How rude. There's something seriously weird about that game. Well, it sounds to me like there's been installed a lot of fail-safes. You really do know the lingo. I'm impressed. Yeah, well, just one of my many talents. Well, I really hated to walk away from the game, but I need to meet Lee here to talk about Julie's case. I'm meeting him now. Kevin, under the circumstances, I'm sure no one would blame you if you backed off Julie's case for a little while and concentrated on finding Victor. It might come to that, but I'm not there yet. But I do think I should stay in Port Charles in case Victor comes back, which means... Our trip to Palau is off. It's not off. It's just postponed. I would go to Paradise with you any time, but I think I should stay here as long as Victor's missing. Kevin, Paradise will always be there. Beautiful and understanding. You know, I'm a lucky guy. <laughs> Don't you forget <laughs> it. Kevin. Lee. Hey, thanks for meeting me here. Hello, Eve. Hi, Lee. Kevin, I'm gonna go do some rounds. I will meet you back here, and we can go home together. Is that okay? Okay. All right. Bye. Lee, I just want you to know that I made it very clear to Julie that I think firing you is a huge mistake. To rub salt in the wound now, Chris Ramsey is helping her. You know, he advised her to replace me with his flunky attorney. I have a feeling Chris Ramsey will be advising Julie on a lot of things from now on. How so? Julie is about to become Mrs. Chris Ramsey over my dead body. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go splash some water on my face. I'll be right back, okay? Hey, kiddo, what are you doing up? I woke up and heard you and Mom. I bet you heard her crying, huh? That's the worst part about being sick, making mom cry. Sometimes hurting people is part of loving someone. It still stinks. Hey, sweetie. I thought you were asleep. You OK? You woke up and decided to join the old folks downstairs. Yeah? Well, the old folks are happy to have you. Hey, can I get you a glass of milk? Sure. All right, I'll be back in a second. What about making you cry, Mom? Hey, you didn't make me cry. Your being sick did. And you can't help that, so don't you be sorry, ever. You understand? I guess. Good, come here. Mmm, mmm. It feels so good to hold you like this. You know, when you were a baby, I hated to put you down. I'd hold you when you were awake, when you were asleep. It just didn't matter. I just wanted to eat you up. You know those things you're reading about in my paper? Mm-hmm. Yes. Will they ever come true? Yes. They will. Every single one of them. For the gentle lady. <laughs> Whoa, where'd you get those? I have my ways. I'm still trying to work on R2-D2 coming over, but until then, uh, here, that'll do. I owe you two tickets to the World Series at Yankee Stadium to be redeemed in 2014. 2014, that's 15 years from now. You're right. You're right. Actually, this is for your mother, though. This is for me. This is for us to have two tickets to watch Neil play in the World Series in 2014. Please answer me, Frank. Why are you in this apartment? I was thinking about renting the place for Lark. The landlord just called me on my cell when I was in my car. Where is he? 
He went to show another apartment. So he just let you stay here? He knows me. We went to school together. Oh, that's convenient. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm, I'm hoping to get a better price. Whose furniture is this? It's a furnished apartment. pointed right into my apartment. You're kidding. You're not going to tell me that the telescope was for Lark, are you? No, of course not. I have no idea what it's doing here, but I'll help you find out. You're lying. This is yours. You've been watching me. Well, Karen, wait a minute. I can understand you being upset, but you are jumping to conclusion. What are you, a peeping Tom? You know, I thought Joe had problems, but maybe you're the real pervert. Karen, wait, wait, listen, don't, don't leave. Look, I don't know what is going on here, but we can figure this out together. Just let me walk you back over to your place. I don't want you walking me anywhere. Just stay away from me. Karen, wait. All right, let's get back to Victor's game. Okay, I'll check the machine, see if anybody called. Any messages? No. What are you looking for? Victor's disc. It's gone. In fact, they're all gone. Neil's sound asleep. The big smile on his face. Well, you know, my goal in life is to keep that smile there. Okay, Scanlon, you can come clean now. Where did you get these lavender roses? And how did you get them so fast? Do you remember Mrs. Fitzpatrick's prize-winning sterling rose bushes? No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, no. <laughs> Tomorrow, the whole neighborhood is probably going to be talking about the flower thief, but... It was worth it to see the look on Neil's face. It, it was great to see him smile. It wasn't just for him. It was for his mother, too. Really? Yeah, really. Just, I want you to know that you're not alone in this, Courtney. It means a lot to have you with me this time as Neil's father. When I talked to men, he said we felt like a real family. It's because we are a real family. I love him more every day, and I could not imagine a better mother for my son than you. Wait, wait. I need you to keep away from me, Frank. Karen, there is an explanation, I swear. Oh, let me guess. Lark needed the telescope for a science project. Eavesdropping 101? Just listen to me, please. You have one minute to tell me why you were watching my apartment. I did it to find out what Joe was doing, to see if he was the addict we thought he was. I didn't want him to hurt you anymore. So why didn't you just tell me that? How can you claim to be so concerned for me and be deceiving me at the same time? I, I didn't want to bring up the whole painful mess again. Joe doesn't even live here anymore. So why were you up there watching me tonight? I wasn't. <laughs> oh, that was somebody else I spotted with a telescope aimed right into my home. You know, I was packing up my stuff. Wait a second. Were you keeping an eye on Joe? Or were you watching the place to set Joe up? Don't be ridiculous. <sighs> no, it's, it's all starting to make sense now. You could see when we weren't home. You had spare keys. You could have come in here and made those sex calls. You know, you're, you're way off base here. Oh, my God. <gasps> Frank. Are you the one that broke Joe and me up? Hmm, somebody looks tired this morning. Did I get any calls last night? No. Were there any messages on the machine? No. You're sure? No calls, no messages, I'm sure. Who are you so hot and bothered about hearing from anyway? Does their name start with K and end with N? Never mind. Let's take your St. John's Ward. The part of Dr. Joe Scanlon is now being played by David Gale. Close alert. Neil can't find his new cargo pants. He's up. And raring to go. Wants to be first one online for the Wild Wild West. Yeah. <laughs> he's not excited about this movie or anything, is he? Well, he's already psyched about seeing the sequel next summer. Next summer? Mm-hmm. Wow, wow. That seems, um, so far away. Well, it is. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, okay? Okay. Thanks. I'm just trying to put it in perspective. Neil's recurrence doesn't mean he's down for the count. 
You know, you always know exactly what to say to make me feel better. That's just one of the perks of having a doctor around the house. I'm glad you're here. Me too. What was stolen? Victor's floppy disks. One of them had an interactive game on it. Which we think was Victor's way of communicating with whoever he's involved with. Look, does anyone else have access to the lighthouse besides you two? No one. And I had a whole new security system put in after Julie and Greg Cooper broke in. I set the alarm, but it was never tripped. And there was no sign of forced entry. So whoever got in had a key and knew how to deactivate the system. Sounds like Victor. Or someone Victor sent. Do you think you could dust for prints? Yeah, sure, but uh, you might want to hear what I have to say first. So, you alive? I don't know. You better check my pulse. Yeah, you're alive. <sighs> How is Christina? Oh, shh. She's asleep. Finally. I was up and down with her all night. Not that I'm complaining. Well, I guess uh, red eyes and dark circles, it's all part of being a mom. Right. Exactly. I don't really have dark circles, do I? <laughs> shh. shh, shh. <sighs> Hello. Hello. Uh, any, anybody there? Who was it? I don't know. It was, uh, nobody was there. Oh. Wait, why are you dressed so early and so very nicely? Well, I got a big day today. I got to talk to the salespeople about how the Serena line is doing, and then Serena has been hawking me about getting a poster to 98 degrees. 98 degrees. She needs the poster because when they come to town, she wants to get them all to autograph it for her. I've been knowing that for a while now. Okay. Plus, I want to get a new VCR so I can uh, look at the Bordizo tape. Why? Why don't you just send out the old one to get fixed? Ah, you kidding? That would take too long. I want to see this tape. <sighs> you certainly are obsessed with the darn thing. Lucy, I'm curious. Aren't you? No, no. I'm not interested at all. I've had it up to here with Bordizo. In fact, I just want to forget about him for good. Yeah, well, that's not going to happen because every time we turn around, there he is. Now, if you don't want to see the tape, okay. But I'm going to look at that tape today. Credit card statement for Bill Dyson. Notice the circled item. Dyson bought a one-way ticket to Rome. Victor's in Italy? Well, that means now we can track his movements. No, afraid not. The card was canceled. Why? Well, who canceled it? There was a bank in Switzerland that transferred funds to cover the balance. There was no forwarding address. Wait a minute. This ticket could be a decoy to throw us off the track. Why don't we try and find out if Victor or Bill Dyson actually went to Rome? Now, don't the G7 countries use computers so they can record all the arrivals and departures? Not a problem. I can access that through your computer. Let's do it. If you're here to try and explain yourself, don't waste your breath. Five minutes. Come on, Karen. There is nothing you can say to justify what you've done. Maybe I went too far when I took that apartment across the street, but I did it to protect you. Protect me? You spied on us through a telescope. To catch Joe in the act. To stop him from lying to you. It was your way of coming between us, Frank. No. What I did was try to help. You knew when this place was empty, so you could use your spare keys and let yourself in. <laughs> you made those sex calls on our phone to make Joe look like some kind of pervert. That is crazy. You were at the studio the day Joe and I shot Lucy's infomercial. The next morning, I found those red pennies in Joe's car. Hey, don't lay that on me. Stop lying. You stole Joe's car keys while we were shooting and planted that underwear. No way. I didn't. Oh, my God. When I caught you with that prostitute, the one Joe supposedly solicited, she was looking for you. You must have used her to set Joe up. Listen to yourself. This is nuts. It's about you not wanting to face the truth. The reason Joe was at the Port Charles Grill the night he got arrested was because you made the date to meet him there. 
But when Joe arrived, you conveniently had car trouble. Joe is an addict. He's out of control, and that is what's real here. The hell he is. You figured he would wait for you, so you sent that woman into the bar with a bogus story about how she's stranded without any money. You knew Joe would offer to help her out. There's no getting through to you, is there? You want so much to trust Joe that you will jump at any excuse you find. I'm afraid you're in for a big letdown, Karen. Mm. Joe's not going to change. Get ready, Frank. Your world's about to come crashing down just like Joe's and mine did. See how you like it. Hey. Mm. Christine's been sleeping for a while. I think you should go upstairs and go to bed. Okay. I can't do that because the minute my head hits the pillow, that sound acts as her wake-up call. <laughs> I'm glad you're taken to this mommy thing. <laughs> I sure am. Well, that's good. And I'll tell you something that agrees with you, because you've never looked prettier. <laughs> now, I'm going to try and get home as soon as possible and relieve you, okay? Okay. Okay. something with those tapes that DV sent. And so I just need you to just be still just a little bit and keep yourself happy. And um, I'll take care of it, because I don't want Scott to see those. It would, it would really hurt him so much. OK, can you do that for Mommy? Oh, boy. OK, I'll be right back. Hello. Lucy, hi. It's Julie. Julie? Devlin. Julie Devlin? Yes. I'm trying to find Lee. By any chance, is he there with no. Scott? No, no, no. He, it, no, he's not. He isn't. I, I wanted to tell him the news. What news? Chris and I are engaged. Chris Ramsey, Chris? That's the one. We're going to be married as soon as we can. Oh, wow, how great. I, I didn't even know you two were in love. Oh, very much. We want to make it official and even uh, start a family. You're going to start a family while you're in the nut house? While, while you're at Ferncliff? Oh, I can't wait. Well, you understand how that is, don't you? Especially now. Chris tells me that you have a new baby. Um, yes. Scott and I are fostering Christina. Christina. What a sweet name. I'll bet she's sweet, too. I, I really envy you, Lucy. Oh, is that, is that her? Is that, is that Christina? Yeah, it, it sure is. Um, she needs me to go right now to take, take care of her. You know how babies are. I can't really keep her waiting. Well, but, but she isn't sick or anything, is she? No, no, she's absolutely fine. She just needs her mommy. Um, listen, I'll give Lee your message. Her mommy? You better take good care of her, Lucy. I want my baby in perfect condition when I get her back. Hey, you. Are you okay? Did that phone call upset you as much as it did me? Oh, boy. Don't worry. Don't you worry your pretty little head at all. You will never have to even see that awful woman. Never. Anyone else here? No. Neil's out with Mary. Why? We have a big problem. Karen spotted me last night in the window of the apartment we rented. Frank, how could you let her see you? It happened, well, OK? Wh why didn't you tell me about this? Because I wasn't sure that Karen would put the whole thing together, and I wanted to do some damage control. And? She read me the riot act for breaking up her and Joe. Beautiful. Beautiful. Does she know about me? No. Well, thank God for that. Now, I wouldn't be thanking anyone just yet. You did make those phone calls to Karen from the classic cat. Where's the proof it was me? Look, 
Look, you have to help me to keep Karen from getting to Joe before I can change her mind about what happened. Forget it. Look, I, I am I am sorry you got caught. But I'm not going to stick out my neck and risk losing Joe if I don't have to. The only reason you have Joe to begin with is because he's angry at Karen for doubting him. But that is about to change. She is on her way to GH right now to tell Joe all about Big Bad Frank. And I guarantee you there's going to be a hell of an apology in there somewhere. How long do you think they'll stay apart once she does that? Come on. We have to get to GH. Okay. Frank was behind the whole thing. I mean, he did this to his own brother. So you came here today to break it to Joe? I guess I'm relieved he's in surgery. Gives me a chance to hash it out with somebody as wise and wonderful as you first. Thanks, sweetheart, but you do sound awfully worried. Well, considering I assumed the worst about the man I was going to marry, yeah, I'm worried. I wouldn't blame Joe if he never spoke to me again. Maybe you're just being a little extreme. No, Frank started this. But I've been willing to believe the worst about Joe. All you can do is just be honest. And hope he understands. Hello, Lucy. Told Scott about our secret yet? No, I haven't, and I don't intend to. Uh, he's gonna find out when he sees our little home movie. He won't see that tape or any other tapes. I destroyed all the copies. Sorry, missed one. Lucy and I get it on. Oh, and what's this? The sequel. Lucy and I get it on. Again. Our very own homage to Pamela and Tommy Lee, eh? Oh, no. Huh. Oh, no. What am I going to do? Oh, I know. I'll call my very best friend for advice. Hey, girlfriend. Felicia? No, silly, it's me, your best friend, Julie. Julie. Oh, oh, well, okay, then. I, I guess you'll have to do, because I just have to tell somebody about the secret I have. Oh, you mean the secret about you and D.V. doing the horizontal mambo while you were in New York? Do you have to put it that way? Take it from a true friend, Lucy. You have to tell Scott the truth. Otherwise, people will suffer. Well, but they'll suffer if I tell the truth. If you lie, you risk losing everything. Do you want to end up a prisoner of your mistakes like me? Oh, you mean locked in a padded cell with no access to pedicures and no trips to the shopping mall? Well, then tell Scott the truth. Don't keep it a secret. Did somebody say something about a secret? Lucy, she's under the delusion that lying will save her. Well, isn't it different? I mean, lying is different than just not telling. I think, right? Come on, Lucy. We've been down this road many times before. You gotta fess up and tell the secret. You don't understand. He's gonna find out anyway. Better tell him. It's better if he hears from you. Tell the truth. I don't think I can. Tell the truth. 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 I'll tell, I'll tell. I'll, I'll tell. Bill Dyson went through customs in Rome. So Victor did use his plane ticket. And according to this, he was detained in customs because of a fake passport. Who are you calling? Yeah, I'd like the American Embassy in Rome, please. There's no telling what Victor got himself into. Kevin, Victor's been working his whole life undercover. I'm sure he can take care of himself. Yes. All right, thank you. Keep trying. She can't get through right now. Look, I've got to take this. Uh, I'll get in touch with my contacts at the WSB. See what they can tell me about Victor's arrest. Meanwhile, you guys keep me posted. Thanks, we will. Okay. 
I'm gonna kill Victor for this. Uh, Kevin, give him a break. You know Victor, he's adventurous. I just got Victor back after all those years of not having a father. I'm not about to lose him now. What are you gonna do? I'm going to Rome. I'm going too. We're on the next flight to Rome. Great, I can be packed and ready to go in about a half an hour. Listen, I'm sorry that we need to postpone our trip to Palau. Oh, come on, Kevin. How can I go enjoy myself somewhere snorkeling with Victor missing? So, what's our plan of attack? Well, first off, obviously we have to stop at customs in Rome because they're the people holding Victor. Next, the American Embassy. Mm -hmm. See if we can get this whole passport thing straightened out. And then, try and convince Victor to come back to Port Charles. And then, can we uh, make our own version of Roman Holiday? You are, after all, just as stunning as Audrey Hepburn. And you are just as dashing as Gregory Peck. Now, this is starting to sound like an adventure. I'm counting on it. I heard you were looking for me. Thanks for coming by. I don't have long. What's up? I know you haven't been lying to me, Joe, and that you were set up. Well, what made you change your mind? Must have been some convincing evidence to get you to do a 180. It was a telescope. Somebody was using it in the apartment across from mine to spy on us. We were being watched? By who? Frank. He was the one that made the calls to the 900 number that planted the woman's panties in your car. He even paid that hooker to set you up. I mean, Frank is responsible for everything. Get him up the sixth floor. Well, what are you going to say to Karen? No, it's not what, it's how. I've got to give the performance of a lifetime. Okay, there she is. Here goes. Karen. When were you going to tell me? Hey, any news on Victor? Well, I finally got through to the embassy. They have a Bill Dyson still in custody by the Italian police. I don't get the feeling that they realize they actually have someone named Victor Collins, though. Listen, I need to go over and see Julie. I need to let her know that I'm leaving. Well, wait a minute. Why can't you call her? Because I really should do it in person. I know that she'll be upset. I hate leaving at this point during her therapy, but she's not in any immediate danger, and I'm not sure I can say the same for Victor. Nice sucker punch, bro. You want to try it again now that I'm ready? Huh? Oh, pleasure. Hey, 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 in case you guys hadn't noticed, this is a hospital. What has gotten into you two anyway? I'm giving Frank what he's got coming to him for breaking up Karen and me. That's bull. It's all a big misunderstanding. You rented an apartment across from mine and spied on Joe and me with a telescope. Not much to misunderstand there. Uh, you are the one with the problem, Joe. I was trying to stop you from lying to Karen and me about... You liar! ...sex addiction! I suspected you behind all this garbage, but to find out you really set me up. You're my brother. How could you do this to me? Turn that thing off. Please, just turn it off. You turn it off. 
When? When, when were you going to tell me? I was coming down just now to tell you. That, um... That kiss... There, there was... Oh... Did... Did you sleep with him? I... He told me that we were lovers for many, many years. And I was so confused and uh, very, very scared when he found me. And, and he was very kind to me. And I, I didn't know that he was lying about everything. See, I, I just didn't know. Wait, wh where are you going? Going out. But, but don't you think we need to discuss this, Scott? We have to discuss it. No. There wouldn't be a discussion. There would just be an explosion. I'm going to go walk around the block about a million times, Lucy. And maybe, maybe I'll come back and discuss it with you then. There isn't one shred of proof I did anything. Why would I want to hurt you? I mean, you tell me, Frank. Was it because you blamed me for losing your job as a paramedic, or are you just a mean bastard like Dad? I am nothing like Dad. The hell you're not. You don't care who you hurt as long as you get what you want. Why shouldn't I get what I want? You always do. You, you think that I wouldn't have liked going to medical school, but I didn't have an older brother working two jobs to make that happen. Yeah, you sacrificed for me, but that doesn't mean you can screw me over. I am telling you, I didn't screw you over. Shut up, Frank. I swear to God, I'll kill you, man. I don't know what you want me to say or do. Dr. Scanlon to the pharmacy. Dr. Joe Scanlon to the pharmacy. You want to know what you could do, Frank? Go to hell. Karen, I know you don't believe me. But I love my brother. You're right, Frank. I don't believe you. Karen. When you were at your lowest, trying to get off DL-56, I sat with you and told you things about myself. I don't tell other people. I did that because I thought you were my friend. I am your friend. No, you and I will never be friends. Karen. Julie, I don't have any choice. If you go, I won't get... Get what? Better. Julie, we have a lot of time to get you better. No, we don't. I mean, I'm just so anxious to prove that I am not some horrible person. Is there anything I can do to get you to change your mind? I'll call you as soon as I get back, and I won't be gone for that long. Not long for you. You're not separated from your baby. Hello. What are you doing here? Picking up my paycheck before I go to Rome. Rome? What happened to Palau? Change of plans. Change of plans. Care to elaborate? No. There's a story here. I can tell by that look in your eye. Come on, you're not going to hold out on your good buddy next roomie Chris, are you? I will tell you the real reason I'm going to Rome if you tell me the real story about you and Julie. <laughs> the real story is we're in love. Okay. Kevin and I are going to Rome to find Victor. That, my dear, is the truth. Okay? 
Now it's your turn. I don't know what more you want me to say. I'm head over heels in love with Julie. She feels the same for me. I'm going to be a little disappointed if uh, you don't believe me. Cause I was planning on asking you to be my best man. Really? You want me to be your best man? You said it. Well, come on, you're my closest friend. Unless you want to be a bridesmaid, I could always ask Julie. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, sure. I will be your best man. As long as you don't ask me to throw the bachelor party. <laughs> so, did you make it around the block a million times? Not quite. I keep going over it in my head, you know, the last month, and... All the times that Bordizo made these, uh, these cracks about what happened. But you, you never let on. I want, I wanted to explain it to you. I just, I, I didn't know how. Okay, I should have told you right when I got back. I, sh I should have told you right away. But there was just so much going around in my head. You know, I was crazy. I, it was going around in me. Oh, maybe you know what it was. Is I. I didn't want to tell you what happened because maybe I thought if I didn't, I could pretend that it never really happened at all. But it happened. Yes, it did. Okay, it did. But that's, it's because I thought I was, I thought I was Eve White. Oh, okay, so that's why you slept with Bordiza, because he lied to you. Because he's a lying snake. And, and maybe, Lucy, maybe, maybe I could forget about the whole thing if, if that's all it was. I don't know, maybe. But what kills me? What really kills me is, is that, that you didn't trust me. You didn't trust me enough to be honest with me. I didn't want to hurt you. I would rather be hurt by the truth than by a lie. You still here? Well, Frank interrupted our conversation. I'd like to finish it. What's left to say? I wish I had listened to that low voice inside that told me you were telling the truth. But I've been burned so many times in the past that it's hard for me to trust anyone. I didn't think I was just anyone, Karen. You're not. I have more faith in you than I ever had in anyone. It's not 100%, is it? Still a little piece of you you're holding back. I'm sorry. We can't have a relationship this way, Karen. I mean, at least I can't. We've got to convince Karen that I didn't do anything and Joe is still a sex addict. Forget it. Hey, you've got as much to lose here as I do. If you don't think that Karen isn't over at GH right now trying to get back together with Joe, you're crazy. That doesn't mean Joe will take her back. And I'm not going to screw up any chance I have with him. But getting caught helping you. Well, let's see how good your chances are when Joe finds out you're as much to blame as me. Hey. How's my favorite psychopath? Oh, none too happy I'm leaving town. Well, just as long as she didn't pull the scissors on you. No, no, Julie's on her best behavior. She's determined to convince us all she never committed those murders. Do you think it's possible that Julie could be in love with Chris? It's hard to know what's real or imagined with Julie. What about Chris? Do you think he's in love with her? I don't know. That's what worries me. It's probably our cab. Oh, good. <clears throat> oh, thank heavens I caught you. Mary. Oh, hi, Mary. I just got your message about Ron. Is that why you came over? You want to come with us? Oh, I most certainly do not. And if you're smart, you'll stay home, too. Why? Why, why do you say that? Because you have busy lives here. And as for me, I don't want Victor back. Mary, have you spoken to him? No. And I, I don't want to. Are you holding something back? Why would I be holding anything back? Because Victor's a man of many secrets. And there's one in particular I can think of from his past. That Victor did intelligence work for the U.S. government. I had no idea he told you. Well, he did. But what he didn't tell me is whether or not he's still on the job. We're betting that he is. Which is why we need to go to Rome. 
No, if he's involved in espionage, you shouldn't go to Rome. Mary, what did he tell you? He warned me not to follow him. And I promised him I wouldn't. Well, that's a promise you made, not me. Now, I'm going to Rome and I'm going to bring him back, and that's a promise I'm making right now. Hey. You should see Serena. She looks so darn cute. She's so excited. She's getting all ready for that 98 degrees rehearsal thingy that Karen's taking her to. And she's got her hair all done up with that glitter gel stuff and little cute red capri pants. Well, that's just great, Lucy. Um, so, do you think it's ever going to be possible for us to get past this? I don't have blinders on as to who you are. You've done some crazy things in your past. We both have for that matter. But I just thought that we were through doing it to each other. We are. We are. Yeah, well then why did you sleep with Berdizzo and not tell me? I should have. I should have come to you right away. Yeah, you should have! We're supposed to get married in a little while here. We're supposed to commit to each other, you know, for better or for worse. Now, how do you do that? How do two people do that when they can't count on each other? You can count on me. I swear to you, I will never, ever, ever keep anything from you again. I oh, promise. yeah, yeah. Well, I wish that I could believe that. 